Welcome to another episode of Quantum Computing. In this episode, I will show you an interesting application of Fourier sampling. Consider the function f that takes a binary string of length n as input and produces a binary values as output. You can think of f as a classification or deciding function that selects some subset of all binary strings of length n. If this function is computable, then there exists a Boolean circuit to simulate it. By circuit here, we mean a Boolean circuit that includes gates like AND, OR, XOR, etc. Physical realization of these gates are diodes and transistors. Now we want to convert this circuit into a quantum circuit where each gate is a unitary operator and the number of registers for the input and output are the same. In a separate video, I will show you how to do this conversion, but for now, we just need to know that this is possible. The input here has a specific form. On the first n registers, we encode x, the input to the function f, and on the last registers, we have a qubit b. The output of the last register is the binary sum of b and f of x. Suppose this function has a specific functionality. On the input x, the output is the inner product of x and a secret binary string u. By inner product here, we mean the inner product modulo 2, i.e. the sum of bitwise multiplication of x and u. Here is an example of the inner product of two binary strings of length 4. The goal is to find u by interactively asking questions of f. How many queries do we need to call the function f or its circuit re representation to find u? In the classical case, if we ask f to calculate x 1 0 0 0 then the output is u1, the first bit of secret string u, because it only multiplies 1 by u1 and the rest of the term are 0. If we compute f of x on x equal 0, 1, 0, 0, then the output is u2, with the same reason. If we continue this process for n different x values with 1 in the ith position and 0, zero elsewhere, then asking this from f gives us the ith component of u, so in total we need at least n queries from f to find u. Now, how many queries do we need to make from the quantum gate representing f to find u? If we set b equal to ket minus, then if f of x is equal to 0, then the binary sum of f of x and b is equal to b or ket minus. If f of x equal to 1, then the binary sum of f of x and b is equal to minus b or minus ket minus. So the phase factor is minus 1 to the power of f of x. The input of the first n register could be anything, for example, the superposition of all bit strings of length n. Since the circuit on the first n register acts as a, the identity function, the output is the same. But the output is the tensor product of the output of all registers. So after rearrangement, the first part of the term is the Hadamard gate on u, and the second part is the ket minus, which is independent from the index. But we know that the inverse of the Hadamard gate is the Hadamard gate. So if we apply the Hadamard gate on the first n qubits, we recover u. The only remaining part is preparing the superposition of all bit strings of length n, which is the easy part, applying the Hadamard gate on n qubit of the state 0.
the number of queries to f or the quantum circuit representation of f is O of 1, which means with just one query from the circuit, you can recover u. This is fascinating because for the classical circuit, we need at least n queries, but in the quantum circuit, just one query. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned.